On today's episode, I'll be chatting about knitting and spinning. I have a few finished objects that I can't wait to share with you. This is Pineapple Knits. This is my channel dedicated to knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn, and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week, and if this is your first time viewing this channel, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I'm coming to you today from coastal South Carolina. We've had two solid days of rain, and so I've just been staying inside and kind of going through my crafting and wrapping up projects and uh, I've been stash diving like going through my fiber and my yarn finding some treasures to work on in the future <laughs> so it's been kind of nice having a couple of days to just stay inside and go through all those things but as you can see on my mannequin I have a new finished object that I am so excited to share with you this is my storm shawl this is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli and for those of you who've been watching for a while, you will know that I've been working on this for a while, <laughs> at least the past few episodes. Um, so I've been looking for some really great one skein projects and I've been meaning to knit this for a while. I'm so happy I did. This is a beautiful shawl. It's first of all, huge for a one skein project. I mean, it is larger than my wingspan. <laughs> it's huge. I would say this is probably six feet across quite large and I would say it's maybe 15 to 18, 18 inches deep I'd say maybe 18 um, I did aggressively block this and um, I didn't measure or anything I just kind of blocked it in the shape uh, that I wanted so it turned out so pretty this is one of my end of the day colorways I'll put the exact number on the screen because I don't remember <laughs> But for those of you who might be new, this is um, my end of the day line is basically dyed from all of my leftover dyes. I don't pour any down the drain. I will kind of save them up and dye a really, really fun colorway. And so this one had, these always have at least 10, 15 colors of dye, which is crazy, but they always turn out so beautiful and so unique. This one, now, while this maybe aren't all of the colors that I normally gravitate towards, I had kind of a holiday shawl in mind. I think this would be so beautiful with like a cranberry red shirt or like an evergreen uh, shirt or dress. You can see those garter stitch sections are just gorgeous along with the dropped stitch rows. And then there's eyelet rows in there as well. They're so beautiful. And I did size down a needle with this, but it still created this beautiful lacy effect and it really helped the shawl block out nicely. I was really happy with that. Now I do wanna show you, I didn't tuck in the ends yet or weave in the ends because I wanted to show you how much I had left at the very end. This is all I had left. I was, I was a little worried, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little worried I'd have enough but what I did is I weighed the last couple of rows. The last couple of rows uh, did have some increases and then they were just garter stitch. So I started weighing and I realized that every row used about two grams. And so when I had three grams left, I just did a regular bind off and it worked out perfectly. So I didn't go with the Pico bind off like specified in the pattern, but I really just wanted to wrap this project up and get it off the needles. So here's what it looks like on. I just think it's so, so pretty and it's very lightweight because it is, it's so airy and because it was aggressively blocked, uh, it's a knit with a fingering weight yarn. So it's just a really, beautiful lightweight shawl and really these are the ones that I reach for all the time as much as I love a DK weight shawl those I I really just have to save those for when it gets really warm these I love for even you know spring and fall if I'm going to be in an air conditioned building sometimes the air conditioning is a little much <laughs> so um, I like to grab these just for a little bit of warmth and they're just really nice. I feel like they make uh, make an outfit polished and um, yeah. So this is a great pattern for a one skein 
pattern. I highly recommend it and I will definitely keep it in mind in the future. All right, I have also kept working on my Emma Top number two. This is a really, really great pattern. I'm, I have really enjoyed it. I have started the back of the tank and it's knit just like the front. <laughs> so there's not a ton of excitement here, but um, so far it's turning out, it, it's just knitting up a lot faster because I know what to expect. And I'm using Bamboo Pop, uh, which is this yarn, and it's in the colorway Winter Squash. It's an absolutely beautiful color. The reason I chose this is because I wanted a nice transitional piece into fall and have that beautiful kind of autumnal color. <laughs> but here in South Carolina, it is just too hot to be wearing sweaters in October even. So no sweaters in October, but I can wear a sweater tank that's completely comfortable. And uh, of course to you, this is a cotton and bamboo blend. So it's great for warm weather. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty difficult to understand, but I got it. I finally got it and it looks really pretty. So this is a side slit on the bottom. And then um, I just, I think it'll add to the comfort and functionality of the tank. So that's what I have so far. And I'm basically on the, you know, the stockinette portion. It's just half brioche rib from there all on up, maybe about 10 inches or so. So that's not bad. I'm, I, it's kind of mindless knitting at this point and um, I'm enjoying it quite well right now. Um, I'm enjoying the Chiaogu needles that I'm using. Um, normally I use Addies because Addies are just very slippery. They're very fast to knit with. And I just picked up some Chiaogus and used them. And I wasn't sure at first because they do provide some resistance, but with this yarn, they've been, they've been great. So no complaints there. It's been, it's been an enjoyable knit, especially because now that I've already done the first half, the second half is a breeze. <laughs> so that's all I've been working on with my knitting. Um, I did s do a gauge swatch on my Glowworm colorway, which is on my Lonnie DK base. I actually have the some other skeins up there. I'm gonna be knitting the Molly sweater by Coco Knits with this yarn and I, um, I don't have the gauge swatch here, but I got gauge with a, I'm pretty sure it's a US six, which is a four millimeter. And it's a step down, a, a needle size down from what is called for in the pattern, but I got gauge. So I was really happy about that. And I will be starting that as soon as I get my Emma top done, because I am really looking forward to knitting with this color. <laughs> it's going to be the best sweater in the winter. And I really wanted to get a head start on it, um, get it, done and have a sweater to look forward to because I really don't like cold weather and I just want to have a fun knit to wear through the winter. So as far as spinning goes, I actually finished this very difficult spin. Uh, this fiber was gorgeous, but really kind of a pain to spin. Um, this was a Hedgehog Fibers Fiber Club from 2020. I'm not really sure what month it was. It was, it is a Merino, Tessa Silk and Viscose blend. The issue I had with this is that the fiber wasn't completely blended up. There were streaks of what I think was viscose in it and it just really made it really difficult to spin. What I finally settled upon is taking chunks of the fiber and spinning them from the fold off the tip of my finger. That worked out really great. And I'm really pleased with how this turned out because I had low expectations, I think. <laughs> Maybe that's the key. Um, I had some pretty low expectations how this was going to turn out, but the colors are fabulous and uh, the drape and the softness of this fiber is just, it's beautiful. So uh, it's a 112 grams, 292 yards. It's about a DK weight and it's a two ply. I spun this on my electric eel wheel and I've really been enjoying that wheel. It's just been a joy to spin on. But that fiber I, or the yarn you can tell is just really gorgeous. So I don't really have a, um, a project for this. I had thought maybe it would be really pretty with in some weaving. Um, 
I've been playing, and I don't know about this game specifically, but I have amassed so much hand spun at this point, and I'm becoming a lot faster with my hand spinning. And I'm playing with the idea of putting some skeins into my shop. I just don't know if the demand is there though, to be honest. So if you have an opinion one way or another, I would love to hear from you. If you could leave a comment below, what do you think? Do you think I should put some of my hand spun in the shop? I just don't really know if there is even a demand. So let me know what you think. Uh, I would really appreciate your feedback. So this is a really beautiful yarn. I'm, I'm very happy with it again, because I think I had low expectations for it, <laughs> but uh, the fiber itself, like so many different colors, it turned out really beautiful. So what I have been working on currently is another Hedgehog Fibers Club. This is from July, 2020, and it's this gorgeous, super sparkly fiber. This is a merino and sparkle blend. I believe the sparkle is Angelina and it's 70% merino, 30% sparkle. So as you can imagine, wow, tons of sparkle. Predominantly blue and green, but some really cool pops of dark colors in there too. This is one half of the fiber and how I prepped this, I split the fiber in half um, because I am going to do a two ply. And then I just took the other half and stripped it into lengths or stripped it lengthwise down the fiber and did about five of these little battlings, I guess. <laughs> and it's been spinning up great. Um, I'm spinning on my electric eel wheel. I'm getting about 10 wraps per inch. And so it'll probably end up being a nice worsted to bulky weight. We'll see how much it bulks up, you know, puffs up once I, uh, once I soak it. It's just turned out so pretty. The sparkle is really just gorgeous. I love a lot of sparkle, so I'm super happy with this. <laughs> One thing I'm working on is really trying not to over twist this because I have um, just from the pat it, from spinning in the past, I know that if something has a high percentage of sparkle, Angelina, whatever it is, you have to be really careful not to over twist this. It just turns out really ropey and stiff. So I'm really, really working on just spinning it enough so it stays together. And then I will, uh, again, like I said, do a two ply. It'll be beautiful. Uh, this, I'm spinning this on a number two speed on my electric eel wheel. So I think it goes up to maybe a six or so. And so far so good, I'm doing it continuous backdraft. So basically pulling it four drafts back and then letting it in. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. It's been really fun. And I, when I pulled all this out, I realized that I had a little sample in my bag here. This is a little sample that I dyed myself. I'm actually putting this fiber into the shop this Friday, but since I have it here, I'll just show you really quickly. <laughs> this is a gorgeous fiber. So like I said, I'm putting this into the shop on Friday and it's a randomly dyed fiber, but it's very unique. It is it's very, very subtle. I don't even know if you can see it, but it's a Merino and Firestar blend. And the colors are just a very subtle pastel rainbow. And so what I've done is dyed on top of that. Let's see if I can get a really good close up. So I don't know if you can see this. This is a section that's undyed. Can you see all those like really, really subtle pastel rainbowy colors? That is the underlying fiber. And so when you put all these pops of color on top, it's just a very shimmery, rainbowy fiber. I am so excited to spin this up. I'm very, very excited to see how it spins up. So the nice thing is with a fiber like this, because it is Firestar, Firestar is a type of nylon, and you get the toughness of nylon, the durability, 
but then also it's a sparkle. It's like a shimmer almost. It's not really, it's not as in your face sparkly like this. Like this is very in your face sparkle, which I love. I love them both. I love all the sparkles, <laughs> but this is going to be really, really fun to spin up and see how it goes. So I will definitely give you a progress update on this fiber. And this is an end of the day colorway. So this is end of the day number 61, I believe is what I'm calling it. And again, it was just a bunch of leftover dye that I uh, dyed up this fiber. So uh, yeah, really excited about this. So that is it. That is all I have this week. And I'm sorry I missed you last week. I actually was feeling a little under the weather, so decided to just take a rest and take a break. And I'm so glad I did because I'm feeling a lot better now. But uh, I am sorry that I missed you. Normally I record every week and I missed last week. So I guess I just had a lot more to share with you this week. <laughs> But other than that, I'm getting ready to film a shop update video after this. I will be having a shop update this Friday, which is July 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern time at pineappleyarn.com. So if you're interested in checking out just a bunch of fun colorways, I have several new colorways, and I like to put them all together and show how colors can go together and whatnot. So definitely check that out if you like to look at beautiful yarn. It's so much fun. <laughs> But other than that, that is it for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked this episode, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up. It really helps build my channel and grow it and share it with other makers who just love the joy of making, just like all of us. But I hope you're having a really great time with your crafting and I will see you next week with another episode and hopefully some progress on some of my projects because I feel like I have a lot going on right now. <laughs> But until next week, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.